Hi everyone, welcome to another video. This is going to be the first part of a series of videos which I'll be doing which covers the route to chartership with the ICE. The first part is about your initial professional development or the IPD and this is where you're going to need to show the ICE that you've attained a chartership level with the nine attributes. I'm going to go through the nine different attributes and provide some examples and evidence on how you can go about attaining each attribute. The first attribute is knowledge and understanding of engineering. This attribute, along with the second attribute, will be one of the easier attributes to gain. Evidence you'll want to provide is anything related to new technologies. This could be new products or new innovations. You want to demonstrate evidence where you show how you implemented or try to implement these products. The best way to expose yourself to new technologies is to attend CPDs. The second attribute is technical and practical application of engineering. This is an easy attribute to get and probably the first one you'll fully complete. A lot of the sub attributes overlap, so I won't go through them all. But for these attributes, any work you do related to design will be applicable for this attribute. You want to expand your technical areas as much as possible. Get project experience in the four major construction materials. So that's concrete, steel, masonry and timber. Make sure you have experience designing a framed building as this will cover a lot about stability systems. Next is management and leadership. This will be one of the later attributes you'll get signed off and you won't start getting these until you start running your own projects. Most of the sub attributes are quite straightforward to understand. You want to show evidence of managing workload, yours and others, how you manage deadlines and manage resources within the wider team. The next attribute is independent judgment and responsibility. This attribute is a bit strange, but it's about being responsible for your own work, but also knowing your own limits and asking for help or, or advice when you need it. You need to remember that no engineer knows everything and it's absolutely okay to ask for help. What you need to show at charter level is the level in which you can work independently without asking for help. A good way to show evidence is by attending design meetings by yourself without your manager, but sitting down with your manager afterwards to discuss actions and come up with a plan on how to deal with them. Commercial ability is another attribute which you won't be achieving until a bit later on. This focuses on contracts, procurement processes and finances. Get yourself some training for contracts and procurement processes. That's an easy way to get these attributes signed off. Once you start running projects, ask your managers to let you have some control of the project finances. This could be monthly invoicing or managing additional fees that come in from SiteWorks. This next attribute is health, safety and welfare and is probably one of the most important attributes. Some easy wins to show evidence is get your CSCS card. Your employer will probably ask you to get this anyway, but if you log it, that's an easy win to get basic knowledge of most of these sub attributes. Go on a health and safety course like CDM 2015 will be an easy one. Uh, you need to make sure that you do some form of health and safety training every year. Another way to get some experience is to go on site. Take opportunities to go to site with big contractors as they have the best controls and regards for health and safety. If you are able to get a secondment onto a construction site, I highly recommend it. Another way to show evidence is by completing designers risk assessments. Next we have sustainable development. This one is a pain to achieve. Remember that sustainability doesn't just mean environment. It could be, for example, financial sustainability. So over designing and costing the client extra money is a form of bad financial sustainability. Even as a structure engineer, you need to have an appreciation for civil or drainage design as it is so closely connected to the structural design. An easy win is to just read up on SUDs Another way to get some evidence across is to attend BRIAM meetings. They are really, really boring as a structure engineer because there's not much we can add, but try and attend at least one. Interpersonal skills and communication, like I've mentioned in previous videos, is so important as an engineer, and which is why they've made a whole attribute for it. Some easy ways to get evidence is write reports, give presentations, demonstrate sketches you've done before, uh, attend meetings, write meeting notes or minutes. 
When you manage your own projects, you'll probably have some people working for you. This will be really useful evidence if you can show how you communicate with them. Markups for technicians are a great way of demonstrating this. The last attribute is professional commitment. Now this is a relatively easy attribute to get, but it needs focusing and time outside of work hours to get. Make sure you keep your CPD up to date. You'll be needing to do this anyway after you've got your chartership. Learn the ICE code of conduct. Get involved with some volunteering for some events. Attend ICE talks after work. These could be like presentations. I think they normally happen on a Tuesday or a Thursday. Now that I've gone through all the attributes, I'm gonna offer just some general advice and tips which can help you along your way. The first tip, save as much evidence as you can. Literally any sort of design which you do, designs which you've done for the first time, save it. It's really good for re referencing regardless of if you're doing it for the ICE. Save it and organize it and try and link it to a certain attribute. Tip number two, don't wait long periods of time before filling out your IPD. Try and do little bits every month and that way and try and get into a habit of doing it. The more frequently you do it, the more you won't have to like think back a long time to remember what you've done and it's just like fresh in your memory. Like if you've done something really good like you've done a sketch or you know something major has happened write it down put it in your IPD or just write it and then you've got some sort of memory of it and then you can like flesh it out later but try and record your evidence in a certain way like a log book or or just an excel sheet or microsoft docs tip number three try and set up regular meetings with your delegate engineer or your DE I would say every three months would be a good interview to do it because every year um, annually you'll be sitting down with your um, supervising engineer to um, formally go through everything which has been signed off. Tip number four, even though the IPD has moved on to an online system, it's still really useful to do a hard copy version in Microsoft Word, which, I, which is what I've been showing you. You can write as much as you want in the Word and then when you go to submitting it formally online, all you have to do is just copy and paste it and it just it's just so much easier. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, please drop me a comment. Please remember to like and subscribe and stay tuned for part two.